Hey, what's up guys? This is Oakley, and this is going to be Rome 2, an online battle, and it's going to be awesome. It's another one of these battles I did against Blade Master, so if you haven't seen the previous one, definitely check it out. This one is going to be interesting. It's going to be Carthage, so that's going to be me, versus the, I believe it was the, yeah, Arverni. So he's going to be moving up through there. Let's go over the army build super quick. I'm going to put this in slow motion. So again, my choice of deployment is always very odd and <laughs> non-linear. Let's go ahead and take a look at my front lines. So I have Carthaginian hoplites, so two of those, then three Libyan infantry to back that up. So I want my shield wall in the front to absorb missile and absorb charge, and then these guys as support to swarm whatever engages. And then I've held my mercenary noble fighter fighters in reserve well out of the, you know, um, battle front lines right there. General's bodyguard in the rear. Over on the left, what I have is going to be mercenary Balearic slingers, backing that up with late Libyan hoplites. Good units. For their uh, for their costs, then I have you know a sandwich of Carthaginian hoplites and Libyan infantry, mercenary Iberian cav, more mercenary Balearic slingers, and some mercenary Iberian cavalry. So interesting mix of my wings right there. We have skirmishers kind of sprinkled around with some hoplite support and some infantry um, in the back, and then some cavalry just skirmishing a little bit in the front. Over on the right side, what I have is mercenary Balearic slingers again backed up by late Libyan hoplites. I have uh, Mercenary Scutari Cav, Mercenary Gallic Warriors, these guys are good on the charge, and Mercenary Samnite Warriors. So this side is a bit more attack heavy, so I want to kind of swing with my right arm in terms of the attacks, so that's why I put my, put my Gallic Warriors here. And uh, let's go over uh, Blade Master's build. So again, he plays a little bit more standard in terms of his uh, layout of his forces. So three Balearic Slingers up through the front, then he has a mix of Lusitani Nobles, Veteran Shield Warriors, Nobles, Shield Warriors, and Nobles. So that's a very sturdy infantry corps. On his left flank, two, sc flank, two Skidari Cav back that up with Iberian Swordsmen. So that's going to be pretty deadly just because of the ja Javelin combination that can tear up my cavalry. He's got the same thing over here, two Skidari Cav with two Iberian Swordsmen. Now we can put this on play. And just watch as the forces deploy. So as you saw with that last battle, Blade Master is very, very good at choosing um, stat-specific armies and build that eke out the most efficiency out of those units. The playstyle is excellent. His micro is very good. His game sense is on point. So he's a very, very difficult to fight opponent. Um, I'm not going to go down without a fight. I think I bring a lot to the fight. Now I don't generally eke out as much as possible out of my units. I'm not very efficient with my builds, um, but I do think that my playstyle where I send out forces in different arrangements like this definitely um, kind of confounds my opponents, and I think I have pretty good micro, so we'll see how that plays out. So I looked at his army and I'm like, okay, main threat from the Arverni is just how many javelins they have. They have elite infantry, and that's mostly what I'm worried about. So I don't want to get close with my cavalry, and what I want to do is just try and land a knockout blow against his skirmishers, and then you know, deal death with my skirmishers from a distance. My opportunity is going to present itself right through here, where I just kind of feint to charge with my Iberian cavalry, force his guys back, and I'm going to pull out of that engagement. What that allows me to do, his guys are forced back, they don't charge, or I'm sorry, they don't get any volleys off, and then I get some more Balearic Slingers shots. After my feint, I go ahead and recommit to this fight anyways with my um, Mercenary Iberian Cav, who have excellent charge stats, and right here I knock down this Balearic Slinger unit and just do tremendous amounts of damage. Over here he's going to try and do something to stop me from doing this, just that, but I anticipated that happening, so you can already see I wheeled about some late Libyan Hoplites to get into that fight. So I'm going to sacrifice my Iberian Cav just to get in on the fight, knock down a bunch of his units. He's going to unleash... let's see... No, it looks like he told those, these guys in the back to hold fire. I was hoping he would waste some of his shots in here, but anyways, I'm getting a lot of kills with my guys up through the front, not only with the just straight up fire, but you can see the supporting fire of my Balearic Slingers here, now going uncontested against his guys, so a very excellent um, engagement there. I was thinking about engaging with my Hoplites, that's going to trigger him to charge in with his Veteran Shield Warriors, so I know I've, I've traded. Let's put this on pause. So, something you have to do in these battles, and my um, intent in this battle is let's get an advantage. So my initial goal was let's get an advantage in the Skirmishing Department. I got that advantage. Instead of you know, staying tied into that battle where he has close support. What I'm going to try and do is disengage and then, you know, kind of form up again for another battle where in that second re-engagement, I'm going to be an advantage because of those, um, the inflicted damage, damage I was able to do. So sometimes you have to learn to disengage and have a staggered retreat. So that's exactly what I'm going to be doing. Pulling back my hoplites, reforming some of my Libyan infantry in preparation for him following up the charge. I'm going to fall back with that wing in the back. Now he's going to try and get some 
counter charges against me, I'm going to try and pre prevent that from happening. So you can see, you have to have your firing lines ready. So I know he's going to want to be in quick pursuit, that's why I have mercenary Balearic Slingers forming up back here just to be in support. And they're going to get some shots off. I'm going to leave some of my late Libyan Hoplites in the front just to kind of be something to absorb his forces. The more and more he extends past those lines, the more um, I'm going to be able to just harass his flanks. I'm going to bait out some charges from his guys. Um, so that's pretty good for my part. So I'm getting out of there with minimal losses, continuing to unleash on his guys. That's a very important thing I want to do against his forces with light armor is just do as much damage as, po uh, as, much damage as possible from a distance. Continue to get some shots off. He's going to be focusing fire, but not before I take out his Balearics. He's not going to attempt a charge against my guys. I'm going to form up into shield wall and try and commit against these guys. So you can see my retreat is working pretty well. I kept, you know, some units firing. My next Balearic Slinger unit is going to pull back and then turn about and fire. And that's going to then allow me to pull back and fire. Over on this flank, I've pulled back a little bit with the hoplites just presenting, you know, a, a thing he can't charge back charge against and then over here I actually snuck up my Mercy Balearic Slingers a little bit closer and we starting to tear into his units on that flank so it's gonna be pretty interesting you can see I'm drawing out his Iberian swordsmen way out of a defensive position here they have no support and that's exactly where I want to get them um, open them up for cavalry strikes or maybe even infantry charges so I'm gonna form up here I'm gonna start to take a lot of nasty volleys from the Iberian swordsmen that's again one of the benefits of the Arverni or sorry, no, this is the um, Lusitani. And uh, yeah, here we go. This is going to be, be the main point where he tried to get in with his gorillas. I know those guys aren't too good, so I'm going to engage with my preliminary hoplites. That's going to force him to start to wrap up against my forces. I'm going to try and charge against this Iberian swordsman. He's forming up in depth, kind of like I was doing. But my hoplites are excellent for absorbing javelin shots, so that's what I'm going to be doing against the hail of missiles coming in through here. I'm going to try and plug another unit into this gap to try and reinforce um, what's going on here. So he has a lot of units just milling about. Because I'm not in a solid line, he's forced to commit you know, a bunch of guys into a frontal assault against Hoplites. Um, that's going to be to my advantage. Here he comes for a charge. I was targeting these guys from a distance, so before he's even able to charge, I pop, pop uh, a shield wall. Going to absorb that uh, assault, and then I did a nice amount of damage. I precipitated an assault on this side with my mercenary noble fighters against his Skutari calf and my own mercenary Iberian calf. I should be taking that fight. I'm going to move my general to try and reinforce this position. Meanwhile, my Balearic Slingers are continuing to unleash against his Iberian swordsmen. His guys here are up against Hoplites from the front. I know I can win those engagements, and I'm trying to get nice javelin volleys against his guys. It's going to force him back. So I'm preventing his guys from charging in through the gaps between my forces. Over here, I try and disengage from this fight after having done a pretty fair amount of damage. He's going to charge right into my mercenary noble fighters. Let's put this on slow motion. So it's going to be a relatively decent charge. Um, he's going to knock some of my guys down. However, his units are not heavy enough to do enough damage. And so I'm going to get um, some good damage against them. And he's going to try and work this flank. But that's, again, why I have these hoplites here to form up and hold those positions back. Over here, because um, Blademaster's Micro has been tied up in that position, I've been able to slowly whittle away at his guys. So I broke one of these Iberian Swordsmen, and I'm now going to be targeting the second one. There were juicier targets over here, but I figured that would be more in range of what he was looking at. So I wanted to kind of sneakily um, pick away at some of his forces over here. I'm anticipating that he's going to, at some point, realize what's going on, and so I'm slowly starting to bring guys in support. Back to the center here. My Balearic Slingers have been chipping away at the enemy Balearic Slingers, so I do have that advantage. My Hoplite wall here is holding up very, very well. His guys, as they try and swarm around me, are just going to be held fixed in position. And then I'm going to continue to allow my Skirmisher advantage to deal death to his guys. So you can see I'm kind of holding his nobles and his Lusitani forces at arm's length, and then just punching away at him with my Skirmisher advantage in the rear. And then I'm going to, you know, this is, this is, the, this is my arm holding his force at bay. You can see he doesn't want to get close to my guys, um, and that's why he's not finding a proper way to engage. It's going to open him up on the flank. What I'm going to do here is instead of just charging into his guys, what I decide to do is his guys have very weak armor, and so I'm going to just unleash javelins, and look how many units that took out in one volley. That is how you want to trade cost effectively. So Libyan infantry decimating that force, and there you go. So I think I've shored up my... my uh, my gains on this side, so my hoplite wall holding up very well. His infantry is now going to start to try and commit. I'm going to send in one of my um, Libyan infantry. I was thinking about it. I'm going to pull out of that position, 
realizing that I have a very healthy Balearic Slinger force, and again, noticing that I don't have to get in among his infantry and risk that engagement, if I have the Skirmisher advantage, it's up to me to just hold back and wait that out. So I'm gonna, gonna try and get as much um, skirmishing damage done as possible. Over here, I sent my Libyan Hoplites to try and disrupt his formation. That's gonna allow my General's Bodyguard to perhaps land a strike through here. However, he moved in with those Lusitani Nobles. I have to keep an eye out the, on those. Over in this position, looks like um, he has realized what's been going on over here, so I'm going to quickly send in some Sukhtari Cav to get against his his own. I'm going to move some Hoplites in front of my Balearic Slingers to guard against a charge, and now I'm going to start targeting his cavalry. My infantry is going to start shifting back into the center. Over here, he was able to break through one of my Hoplite units, so my Libyan infantry is going to unleash against his veteran shield warriors. I'm going to form up in shield wall, and just allow these guys to, to move forward, allow, you know, he doesn't want to charge me, because then I can get some flanking shots and outnumbering shots as he retreats. Then I get a nice free strike with my General's Bodyguard. So you can see exactly how I'm doing these engagements. Just keeping him, like I said, at arm's breadth. And he's really not sure what to do. All he's able to do is shuffle his troops around. That allows my skirmishing advantage to take its toll. And just wipe out more and more of his guys. You can see he's forced to draw away. He doesn't want to be in these types of engagements. And again, I think it's just due to the fact that I have these odd types of formations. Over on this side, he's been forced to abandon it. I'm now going to be able to continue to pick away at his guys. And I have ample reserves. Up through the middle, he's going to bring in his cav. And that's how he wants to crack my formation. I'm going to try and shore up my forces through here. So here comes a charge. I form up into shield wall. He's going to land a strike right through my guys. However, his own javelins are going to knock his guys out. And then I have supporting forces in the rear, so I should be able to start to slowly strip away his cavalry advantages soon. I send two guys into that formation. Um, he's going to send some guys to try and prevent me from charging over here. I'm able to ward that off by going into shield wall. And over here, I've been able to already destroy his Qutari cav. One of his um, depleted veteran shield warriors are going to try and commit to this fight. I'm going to land uh, a nice strike on the flank. Dis try and disengage with these guys and reform behind my uh, hoplite lines. My skirmishing advantage still continuing to whittle away. Iberian swordsmen are going to be going down. And now I have the flank of his guys exposed. I'm trying to bait him into charging these Balearic Slingers with his cavalry. And he's going to fall for that bait. I have Mercenary Scutari Cav ready to reinforce. You can see all my guys coming in here. Over in the center, however, I'm getting caught in the position where I don't, I'm not able to keep him at arts arms uh, breadth. So my mercenary noble fighters this is going to be a very decisive moment. I send in my mercenary noble fighters to try and clean up this center position with his cab. Um, Blade Master is going to seize on this moment to try and charge in with all his heavy infantry in supporting fire and take out my elite guys. These are my most elite forces. What I'm going to do is not commit more forces to that grinding fight. I'm going to form a defensive perimeter around that and try and, you know, target his guys who are trying to surround me with my own Balearic Slingers. These guys got caught up in a at a at a distance by his veteran shield warriors, but I have supporting fire to take them out. Over here, you can see he wasn't able to land a strike on my adversary Balearic Slingers, but it's forced his cavalry out of position, and it's allowing me to now circle back and start to do damage. So, you know, this is going to be a very very interesting fight. Over here, his cav is going to try and get in amongst my men. However. My Hoplite is always falling back in a supporting position. My General's Bodyguard kind of filling the gaps here, trying to hold back. My own infantry getting some volleys against that. So his cavalry is starting to dwindle. I'm getting some nice supporting fire over my own Hoplites. I was hoping to get a, a, a flank shot on his Lusitani Nobles, who are very expensive units. I'm going to flatten them. So get some nice exchanges right through there. His Javelin men want to get some shots into my guys, and that's what they're starting to do. I'm going to send some Hoplites to force that back, get some uh, Balearic Slingers to force him back as well. He's going to be forced to pop, what is this, a Headhunt, and now I'm going to get a nice charge into the rear of his Noble Fighters with my Libyan Hoplites, so doing everything I can to negate the effect of his Noble Fighters. I'm going to get into his Qutari Cav with my Hoplites. Over in the front, however, my own um, Noble Fighters were killed. You can see the Stragglers are now moving out, so that was pretty terrible blow to my guys. I wasn't, wasn't able to do the damage that I wanted against his nobles here. I'm going to charge against them, so at least I got them tired out. Here he's finally going to get one cavalry into this position. My Gallic warriors, who are still fresh, are going to charge into here, get some nice counter charges against his cavalry. And these Balearic Slingers are actually out of ammo at this point, so I'm mostly using them as bait. Same with these guys here. They're pretty much out of ammo with 248 kills, so just keeping his cav uncommitted. 
Palpite is doing a good job to ward his guys away, keeping my flanks protected. My Libyan infantry here is getting sandwiched by some units, so I'm going to commit some Hoplites. I want to just slow that down. And over here, I have Libyan infantry forming up in shield wall against Lusitani nobles. He's going to win that fight, but I want to draw it out as long as possible so I can maybe find a gap in his formation to slip around and do hammer and anvils. In the center, I'm hoping to win this. His veteran shield warriors are starting to crumble. And here exactly, these Marseille Belarus Slingers are down to their last couple of volleys. I'm successfully able to bait him into a charge right through here, which is exactly what I wanted. And then I come in with my general and clean up his Scutari Cav. I know at this point he has basically infantry left. If I can take out his cavalry advantage, then that is going to be, you know, the advantage is going to be mine. And then I can do all the hammer and anvils I want. In the center, it looks like my tactics are kind of working. I'm trying to hold him back as long as possible. Gallic Warrior is being charged by his cavalry. They're absorbing a lot of uh, guerrilla fire. I'm going to form back around with my hoplites in close support. So this is going to be very, very close engagement. I'm still cleaning these guys up. Over in this position, I'm going to slowly pull my guys back in. Just defending the flanks of my blob over here where I'm trying to win out against the enemy force. However, this is going to be a very important unit. My general, enemy genu enemy's general's bodyguard, which is loose time noble, popping... Uh, headhunt and battle rhythm that's going to mean their killing power is going to explode they're already almost at 70 kills so i don't want to throw anything into that mean meat grinder what i have to do is get hammer and anvils on that blob so that's exactly what i'm going to try and do with my general i'm going to try and push through however i get slightly caught i'm gonna have to keep spamming attack orders to get through there i do have some healthy liberty infantry here just unleashing javelin volleys into the flank of these guys i'm going to clean up the rear my my uh, Blech, I keep getting tied up. <laughs> a blade master is going to counter charge, so at least that pulls away the pressure here, but still it's going to break through these general's units here at 108 kills. So he's going after my own general. I'm going to be forced to pull out of the engagement, so it's taking away pressure from my front. Meanwhile, I'm cleaning up this flank against his Cantabrian cav. So, you know, I'm hoping to re engage through the center with my Libyan infantry, tie his guys up, and then use my general to threaten the rear. It's going pretty well for me here. He was able to get, finally, my Belarus Slingers, who have 250 kills. I'm going to keep continuing to try and form up in the center where my guys are strong. His cavalry is trying to get around my flank. He's going to get a nice um, lined up, almost charge on my flank, but I'm going to get in here with my Mercenary Samnite Warriors and force his guys back. So you can see I'm trying to form a per uh, defensive perimeter around my units here. And just because, where'd my general go? Yeah, my general just running around in the back is going to force his guys to be drawn away from the main engagement. So that's going to be to my benefit. But what it does mean is I'm not able to pop rally abilities on my guys, which is going to be bad for me. Hot plate here, just holding strong. He doesn't want to charge with the veteran shield warriors. He's just trying to get um, javelin volleys off against me. So being very prudent with his units. My mercenary Gallic warriors charging once against once again against his Skutari. I use my mercenary Belarus singers in the front. Just to blunt his assault, I have no purpose for those guys. They're out of ammo. They're just there to bait and uh, bait enemy fire and then absorb charges like that. So I'm not too worried about that. This blob right through here is open for a charge. So I'm trying to tell my guys to come through here. However, I need these Libyan infantry to hold out just long enough to tie up his guys, um, allowing me to charge through there. His cavalry is continuing to be a nuisance, a thorn in my side, preventing me from sending more force forces over here. And he detached this general's unit, anticipating I wanted to do hammer and anvil, so that's going to be bad for me. I'm going to throw in one of my mercenary Samnite warriors, still pretty good forces, against his Lusitani nobles here, who have 255 kills at this point. So these are excellent infantry. I have my own guys at full strength. Kind of tired. His guys are exhausted, so I hope to, to do well there. I'm going to try and land a nice strike against his guys, and it looks like it's going to be a clean sweep into his forces. However, Lusitani guerrillas here. We're going to try and get in on the mix, so I'm doing everything I can to even up this fight here, but it's going to be a very, very close one. Watch some of this. Very, very close fight. In the back, I'm continuing to have problems with his cavalry. They're low in numbers, and they're not doing that much damage, but it's just enough to force my hoplites to shuffle around constantly to try and pre protect my rear. Every now and again, he's going to find an opportunity to land some strikes. So my mercenary Gallic warriors are going to be going down. My general's still alive. Going to tie up this Cantabrian cav. Scutari cav here. A lot of kills on them as well. So um, it's a lot of ping-ponging through here where we just want to face our opponents head on. Um, looks like Blademaster is going to get in through here. I was able to pop second win, so my guys being fresh are now going to start doing much better in that engagement. This is uh, rather unfortunate. I had one guy back here who um, I didn't notice came back from routing. I really need to get him back into the fight because you can see I'm starting to get outnumbered. I am getting some advantages here. I have enough Hoplites to beat back his Cav. 
and these exhausted and tired veteran shield warriors. So I'm not too worried about that. I really need to bring these guys back to the fight to land some hammer anvils. My general still wheeling about, looking to land some strikes against his units over in this vicinity where I'm holding up pretty well. But these guerrillas are on overwatch trying to keep my guys back. And so I'm forced to, to not do anything special with my general, even though he has 74 kills right now. Some Lusitani nobles here, 203 kills. I'm going to counter charge straight into them with my uh, own limited infantry with 108 kills. I'm going to try and get a nice sandwich on his forces. I really want to lock, knock out his Lusitani nobles. He's then going to take the advantage and try and knock out my mercenary Samnite warriors. So it's desperate straits right now. I was able to save these Carthaginian hoplites, who can now come back and reinforce. My infantry is still not coming back. I think I'm going to just uh, remember or realize that they're there uh, a little too late. My guy is over here um, still holding out somehow. But now these Lusitani nobles almost at 300 kills. Headhunt being popped. He's soon going to use second win. That's going to be the end of my forces. So I definitely need to bring reinforcements. My general is going to try and scoot around here to land some strikes. However, tag team of Lusitani guerrillas plus... These um, Scutari Cav are going to be chasing my gen away. I know that if I lose my gen, you can see my wavering units are surely going to go down. So I'm telling him, um, you know, attack uh, movement orders to try and get out of there. I use, I'm going to pop second wind right now, and that gives me a slight boost. What he's going to do actually is he knows this is going to be the most important part of the battlefield. In order to um, get at me, he's going to use um, frenzied charge. And that's going to give him a slight boost, just enough of a boost to catch up with my general. So an excellent move of a little ability right through there. I realized all too late that my Carthaginian hoplites were still alive. I'm trying to give them attack orders, but he caught up with my general. That is then going to trigger the morale losses and penalties to my guys. So here come my Libyan infantries starting to waver. And the other one here is starting to waver as well. So it really came down to the last couple units, that fatal charge against my general. Had I had these hoplites in the mix, I could have saved my general and perhaps turned the tide here. Um, so all around, very, very, very closely fought battle. Um, and this is why I love doing these fights against Blademaster. He's an excellent player, and I think we definitely went toe-to-toe -to -toe in this one. Um, a great showing. Uh, definitely check these commentaries out from his perspective on his channel. He does a great job, and he has his own YouTube channel as well. So I'll link those below. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. Let's go ahead and end the replay and take a look at some of these stats. So a huge grinding fight all out. Myself getting a um, fair amount of kills him as the victor doing perhaps a bit better. Um, I think where I shone the most was just keeping him, like I said, at arm's length and just chipping away with my skirmishers. 263, 146, 250, that is incredible value for these Balearic Slingers. Meanwhile, his Balearic Slingers doing almost nothing. You can see my cavalry not doing all too well, uh, as opposed to his. He had more cav than mine, uh, and in better quality, so I think I did a pretty good job of keeping them at bay, but towards the end of that battle, with the repeated strikes, they did a lot of damage. His main cheap line, not doing that well, but again, these guys are cheap. They're not expected to do too much. Most of the killing power came with his elite infantry. So almost, you know, 250 uh, kills a piece for those guys. That's an excellent use for them. Even the general here, 280. You can see at my core, I didn't really have much um, elite infantry. The only one was the mercenary noble fighters that I think I threw away too quickly into that fight. Gallic warriors here getting a fair amount of kills. So my infantry doing its job. Just You can see I had more men than my opponent. I wanted to keep his guys at bay with my hoplites. For their price, they did pretty well. 101 kills, 75 for these cheap guys. So first wave to tire out, second wave to do more damage, and third wave hopefully to knock him out. Kind of like Hannibal's strategy at um, Zama. But uh, it was all for naught. But definitely, you can't say this wasn't closely fought. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Like I said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.